So, hey guys, thanks for joining me in today's video. Today I've got Carrie from Helium 10, who's a uh, product expert in, on Helium 10, and she's going to walk us through some of the uh, sort of features about Helium 10 and uh, more specifically how to actually uh, find a, a, a new product on, on Helium 10 and what tools you can use to do that. So, uh, Carrie, do you want to just introduce yourself a little bit and tell us a bit about Helium 10? Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Carrie. I am a brand evangelist at Helium 10. And that just basically means that I tell people how to use utilize the tools. I've myself been using them since about 2017. So I've been, you know, a long time uh, user because I'm also a seller. I'm a seven figure seller with my dad. We've been selling since about wow. 2016. So um, I definitely have some knowledge here to share with you and I'm happy to share with you. And uh, yeah, I think Helium 10 tools are the absolute best tools. So um, definitely if you are looking to sell on Amazon, this is the best place to find products to sell on Amazon. Okay, excellent. It's, it's amazing that you're, an you're a seller as well. So that's really yeah. good. So, and then my audience love hearing about sellers who are doing very well, seven figure seller. So that's bigger than me. I'm a six figure seller. So. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> maybe about pounds and dollars, maybe I'm seven, but not maybe, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. So yeah, um, cool, cool. Do you wanna just kick us off then and maybe- sure. uh, yeah, I'll share my screen here. Let me just make sure. So you've got a family business as well. That's amazing. So. Yeah, family business. My dad and I. So oh, cool. um, we've uh, we've been doing this for a little while. Uh, awesome. And yeah, so I actually started out um, as a freelancer too. I was helping other other people with their businesses while I started kind of growing our own. And that's kind of my background. And so I've seen a lot of different things in the industry. And um one of the, the best tools here for product research is black box and that's with helium 10 so if you go to the tools tab up at the very top mm -hmm. um you're going to go click on black box and then once you're in black box we have a bunch of different tabs here and these are all different ways that you can filter through and find products so we have you know billions of products in the database and then you want to filter down through all those products based on parameters that you set so um the first tab i'm going to use look at as products, but there's also a keywords tab. This is ABA, Amazon brand analytics, top search terms, competitors, niche, product targeting. And then this one is our elite one for our elite group. Um, but I'll focus on um, just a few of these over here today. Um, the first thing you always want to do is take a look at your market, uh, which market you want to sell in. So if you're in the UK or wherever it is you want to sell, you can choose the market. I always choose the US because that's where I sell. Um, and then you're going to choose a category. Okay. So the category is important. Now, I I usually don't tell people to select all. I usually tell people to select certain categories that they're interested in. For example, there was a lady that was in one of our groups and she was really into arts and crafts. Um, and so she knew that niche very well and was able to find products that, um, you know, people wanted that weren't necessarily available or of good quality. And then what she started doing is she started doing some live selling on, on um, Instagram and a few other places. So really cool you know, to think about it that way. I also have another friend who's really good at with cars. He's obsessed with cars and found some really good opportunities with automotive. So think of things that you already do like and how you can make them better. And, and, you know, since you already know, you don't have to do a ton of research. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be that way though. Um, just kind of a thought if you do have, you know, something that you thought, oh, I could make this better or this should be better. That's, that's a good winning product. It's, it's kind of solving a product for people or so, sorry, solving a problem for people. Okay, and yeah. uh, whenever there's a problem that hasn't been solved, that's always a great opportunity for a product. And uh, and so you would already know those things with your, uh, you know, with your favorite niche. Absolutely. I really... yeah, so it's, a, it's a good idea, basically, yeah, to have a product, in, well, not a product, or a, a category in mind, I suppose. And I do actually say that to people who get into Amazon. There are so many categories in Amazon, it's crazy. So I always say try and do something you're interested in. That's probably the best way to start. Like for me, sewing might not be the best category to nah. get into because I've got no interest in that. But maybe automotive would be a good one. So, and you yeah. can see here that we've got all these like major categories, and then obviously under that you've got the subcategories. So there's such a variety on Amazon; it's kind of insane, really. Um, yeah, yeah, sure. that's awesome. Cool. So I'm gonna choose handmade. I really love the handmade section to find good okay. products. Home and kitchen, kitchen and dining. I'll just do office products, patio and lawn. I just choose some of them, you know, whatever you think. Um, and I'll just stop there. Sure. And again, you can add more, you can do less, whatever it is that you wanna do. Uh, the next thing I like to look at is sales price. Now, this is really important because you wanna make sure that you're selling a product that has good profit margin. You need to take into consideration the cost of the actual product, 
um, to make it and with, with packaging and ship it to, you know, wherever their Amazon warehouses are. Um, and then Amazon has referral fees. So whatever the category is, it has, you know, a set referral fee for Amazon based on, you know, them allowing you to list their, your products on their site. Then there's a picking, packing and shipping fee for Amazon fulfilled by Amazon. Um, so the FBA pick, packing, shipping fee. Um, and that's based on the size and weight. So you want to kind of factor in all of these things and you want to, the bigger the profit margin, the better, obviously. So, yeah. you know, I, I always say a minimum of $25. I really wouldn't go lower than that. You're not going to make much of a profit margin. Yeah, um, so this is you, the, yeah. So when sorry. you factor in the fees and things like that, it's very hard. I, I mean, if you even go even lower than that, you know, once you factor in fees, shipping, there's just no money to be made, you know, yeah. you might see some people in there who are doing it, but Maybe they're sort of Chinese sellers who are doing some dodgy stuff, but yeah, yeah. Uh, that's good. $25 minimum. Cool. I will talk about that a little bit too, and I'll show you yeah. some tools we have for that. Um, monthly revenue is the demand. So you want to find products that have a high demand and a low competition. So you want to see products that are selling a good amount of money every month to show that there is actually demand for that product. And so I always put in a bit minimum of 10,000 here. Now that doesn't mean you can't put a different minimum. You could put 5,000, you could put 20,000. The more you play around with these filters, the different kind of results that you're going to get. So I would encourage you to kind of take this as a guideline, but then like just branch out and start playing with these other filters too, that I, um, that I, you know, in different ways. Um, and then review count is going to show you competition. So um, review count is really, really important. And um, let me see if I can just pull up Amazon right here. So if I go to Amazon and I search for vitamin C serum. Okay, we can't see that. We're just still, we're still on the helium 10 right uh, now. But, um... I guess I can't uh, share both screens, can I? All right, so let's let's just take a look or just just think about, you know, going to Amazon to like vitamin C serum. There's literally like 30,000, uh, 100,000. There's tons of reviews in the top 10 listings. So those listings are going to be very, very tough to compete with. You want to find listings or products categories where in the top 10 listings, there's, you know, maybe 100 uh, reviews or 50 reviews. So really 100 or less is going to be less competition. So it's going to be really um, helpful for, you know, you to kind of look at the competition, because if you wanted to compete with somebody who has, you know, 100,000 reviews, you're going to, you're going to just not be able to comp compete. You, other companies can, if they have millions and millions of dollars, but I don't think that that's what everyone here is going to, you know, want to do. Um, yeah. so I always suggest, you know, finding at least, um, products that have, you know, less than a hundred reviews in the top 10. So not necessarily all of them, but just some. So I always put a maximum of a hundred reviews there to, to find products that have less competition. Yeah. The reviews are actually quite hard to get on Amazon, aren't they? As I'm sure you've like um, seen. So in terms of like for every maybe hundred sales, how many reviews would you expect? I not mean, I, I don't know that there is that difficult anymore. It used to be a lot more challenging. Like for example, you can do a vine review program. So okay. when you start, when you launch a product, you can pay for the initial reviews. And so you can get up to 30 reviews from vine reviewers. And okay. so that's a really good way to get those initial 30. And then they have this thing where it's a, an automated, automated review request button. And you can literally, re, you know, request those automatically through helium 10 and um, Amazon sends an email to customers on your behalf. And that it will increase your uh, review Rate so, um, it used to be a lot harder, and people are always, you know, how do I get reviews? It it seems to be I don't know about you know exactly how many out of a hundred, but you know when you use that review request button, you definitely see an uptick in sure. reviews. Okay, that's cool. Um, so shipping size, um, I always select the small standard for beginners because it's just a lot easier to deal with a lighter weight product and a, just a smaller product in general because it's going to be less expensive to ship. So I always like to start out with, you know, kind of the smaller shipping size. Um, you can also look at other things like um, number of images. So say you put in a maximum of three, that's a listing that only has three images, which means they're really not optimizing their, their listing very well. And so what you can do is you can say, okay, well, I'm going to create a listing. I'm going to have seven images. I'm going to fully optimize the whole thing. So you can kind of find listings that maybe aren't as good, but they're still selling well. Um, okay. you can, you know, add in title keywords or exclude title keywords. Some of the title keywords that I would usually exclude when I'm looking are things like holiday stuff. Uh, as beginners, I would recommend not doing seasonal products because it's really hard to es estimate exactly when you get the products in, when to start selling them and how much you need. Cause you want to sell out through that, 
uh, season. So it's, it's a, it's a challenging thing. I wouldn't recommend for beginners. Then you can also search by listing age here. Like say you wanted to know, you know, newer, newer products, you can do a maximum of three months. It's really up to you. You can play around with these filters, but I'm going to get, uh, go ahead and hit search here. And okay. So we're going to see a bunch of different, uh, different products here and I'll just see if I can find this. So we've got a, a table runner here. I'll just expand this. When you click on this picture, there's a little button there that it will expand it to Amazon. And um, okay. I wonder- so What, what are you I looking for right now when you look at this page? Any kind so, of things that you're popping out to you or any, yeah. Um, I'm just kind of looking for interesting pro products right now, okay. making sure that the price is good, but I want to show you them on Amazon. So I need to figure out how to share the other tabs. Okay, no problem. Um, no problem at all. I'm going to do entire uh, window. So what we've there done we now is we filtered um, opportunities, I guess you could say. Yeah, we can see. Uh, yeah. Now we can see the uh, Amazon. So, yeah, yeah. And, and so we've got, you know, a bunch here. Now you can filter it down even more if you wanted to. But I usually just look for interesting things. I'm like, okay, an interesting rug here. Um, urn. Uh, I've actually seen some urns for, you know, pet pet urns are actually a big thing too. Uh, you know, you find yeah. this kind of stuff in these. You, Never would have thought um, of that. So they get yeah. something immediately. Yeah, so <laughs> even morbid things. Like we have a, a product that's our test product. It's it's a coffin shelf and it's very gothic, morbid, and it sells year round. And I'm telling you, okay. coffin stuff, it sells year round because there's a, there's a niche for it. Yeah. Um, okay, so this is an example. So see this tablecloth? There's like a bunch of tablecloths here and I might not want to sell that tablecloth so i can just edit filters and i can go to exclude title keywords and i can do tablecloth table cloths and that will and if you hit apply filters that'll eliminate those you know things that keep repeating a lot um so let's see let's take a look here and see if there's anything else down here now obviously you're not always going to find you know your winning product on the first try here you gotta keep looking but um we've got linen napkins we've got like fake money here that's kind of funny okay. uh <laughs> let's see here uh mailers a google review tap card i've never seen that before let's take okay. a look at that okay so when i just take it here let's see so it looks this is for businesses um so google review tap card um, so basically mm -hmm. it's, um, got a QR code on it and it looks really nice. Something that you can display in your business. So you can get a pack of five here and you can, you know, put them all around your business. Uh, so that's pretty cool. So it's like a tap technology where you can just kind of tap it. Um, yeah. So that's like a credit card. That, kind of interesting. <laughs> yeah. So that's interesting. And it's in the electronics. It looks like, um, let's see here. Google review card. Let's see if we can find any more. Uh, looks like there's a lot of people selling this, but um, mm. you know, maybe just singles. The, the five pack is good for for the one that we saw because you know when when you do kind of that's something else to think about. You can do multiples and increase the price point um, and make more money that way. Um, but if we take a look at X ray, this is where I usually kind of look at the numbers now. Um, okay. The, the first thing I'll take a look at is the price, okay? I wanna see something that's minimum of $25. So this is pretty good, it's within that range. There's some that are you know lower, but um, for the most part, it's it's in the good range, okay? Mm -hmm. The sales, you wanna see a good amount of sales. It looks like there's a pretty good amount of sales of these, okay? This is this looks like kind of a newer, newer niche here. Um, and then uh, it looks like there's a lot of, they're basically US sellers. So they're a higher price point, a lot of US sellers. Sometimes you'll see like mostly Chinese sellers and the price points super, super low. So that's when you can think, okay, uh, you know, the Chinese sellers are obviously going to have a very much a lower price point because they're usually coming factory direct or they can, you know, negotiate better in China. So there's good and bad to that. So a good thing for that is you can beat out the Chinese sellers based on the fact that you know your culture and you know what people like and kind of the lingo and how to market to you know, people will say in the UK or in the US, uh, whereas a Chinese seller might not. And then, um, whereas they might beat you on the price. So it really de depends on what you think about. Um, sure. And then, uh, you know, if you go over here, you can see there's good reviews. Um, the review count is super low. So this is, 
this is low competition. So this is actually really good. The only thing that I would say, and this is our X-ray extension. I forgot to mention that. I pull our, our Chrome extension to find all this information. Uh, we pull out, you know, sales estimates and all this great detail that will help you to kind of determine whether or not it's a good pro product to sell. All the numbers look good, like low review count, really good sales, um, good price point. The only thing I would say is when you look, it's all of them look the same. So yeah. it's pretty much a harder thing to differentiate when it comes to this. But you could start to think about this product and say, okay, um, how else could I do this? Maybe have it say, you know, leave a leave a review on Yelp or leave a review on our website or something like that, where it's like a kind of a decorative thing that people can program themselves to, you know, send to their own website. Or you can kind of think out of the box. There's a lot of things you can do when you see this kind of thing to think, okay, this is a good a product that's selling well, how can I make it better? Um, but you know, there's not a whole lot of competition with this. It, it, you know, it looks like it's kind of an up and coming niche. So the people who kind of got in here faster are going to, um, you know, probably make a lot of sales there. So really, really yeah. interesting for that one. So with that one, is there any way to see like the search volume for that particular sort of search term or? Yeah. So um, we actually can see, um, x-ray keywords. We can see, uh, if you just pull it in the Chrome extension, it'll pull, uh, keyword data in here as well. So Google okay. review tap card, um, search volume 3,100. Looks like it's okay. trending down a little bit. Dot card, I guess that's another keyword. So I wouldn't have known that. No, Looks like either. it's trending up. Dot business card, smart card. So in, search of, in terms of the search volume, uh, so yeah, is there, is there a number we're looking for? Like a minimum of a thousand or 2000? Not necessarily or... um, because okay. you know, you're looking <clears throat> for people searching for it, obviously people buying it. So I, I usually look at the sales because if there's a good amount of sales, that means that, um, you know, there's other keywords. It's not just one keyword that you're going to make all your sales off of. Okay. So, um, like for example, we've got Google review tap card, but I didn't know what a dot card is. So what I'll do here now is I'll look for dot card and I want to see what that even looks like. Um, so that looks like a digital business card. Yeah, okay. So that's kind of interesting that I wouldn't even know how you would sell sell that on here, but very interesting. So that's what a dot card is. Um, smart card, customer reviews, Google Play card. Uh, that's probably not it. But yeah, you could get kind of a, an interesting idea. Or you can go to our other keyword research tools. Um, we have a tool called Cerebro where you can take any of those um, ASINs and you can click put it in here and do a reverse search. And you can also just search the actual, you know, name like Google tap card and in magnet to see the search volume and other related keywords. Okay. Um, so what I mostly do though, is I'm looking at, you know, the sales to kind of look to see that there's demand looking at the competition first, and then I'll go into keyword research. Okay. That's usually um, the this, this strategy that I have. So that one kind of is an interesting one. I might start thinking about how I could, you know, you could also think about, okay, if I did a Yelp one, could I do Yelp? Could I bundle it uh, and make it even better for them? Because people get, you know, Google reviews, Yelp reviews, and then there I saw Facebook review tap cards. So people do Facebook reviews on there too. So there's a lot of different things you can kind of think outside the box. Like, how can I differentiate this? How can I make it better? Can I make it a better color? Um, what are some things that people are saying? So um, for example, like say we wanted to do this Aztec, um, as tech table runner, this is kind of cool. Um, something else you can do is you can look at the reviews, review insights, and you can actually download all the reviews and see what people like about the product, what they don't like about the product. And then you can make an even better product or say, um, people wanted to bundle it with something else. Like for example, um, you know, uh, let's see, for example, there was a, a coffin letter board. That's like one of those fault letter boards. People were like, I hate the font on this. And so you could change the font on a letter board and make it better. And, or, or you can, you know, provide like a bundle of, you know, a bunch of different letter types so people can choose their own. So a lot of different things you can do. So I would so always suggest looking at these things, not as how can I copy exactly what's being done here? How can I make it better? How can I make it stand out? How can I make it unique? That yeah, so you're is looking what, for opportunities, yeah. Yeah, you're looking for opportunities, but then this is going to be, you know, you, your differentiator is, it's not just a carbon copy of something else. You're looking to make it better. Um, okay, so that's the the products tool. Uh, one other tool that I really love is our product targeting tool. 
This is where you basically can take any ASIN and you can see kind of similar products. So I'm going to show you. Um, so this is our, I'll show you what our product is. It's a, it's a coffin shelf. And again, like I said, it's really weird, but it's our, our test product that we did a case study on okay. and, um, it sells year round. I, I just always am so blown away by that, but, um, basically, um, Google. this coffin shelf here, um, let's see what this is ours actually. So I'm just going to copy our ASIN here. And what I'm going to do is that ASIN is something that you're going to put right here and you're just going to paste it. And that's our ASIN. And all I do is hit search here. And this is going to show products. When you take any ASIN, you put it in the product targeting, it's going to show similar products. So things that you could bundle with your product or things that you could maybe kind of expand your niche to. So really, really cool. A lot of times people also use this in their pay-per-click advertising because they might advertise on kind of similar products because people will buy both. Okay. Um, but so for example, like a bat shelf, you know, you could technically, you could bundle a coffin shelf and a bat shelf together. It's kind yeah. of the same niche and, you know, see if people buy that. Um, we've got another product here. That's like a ice skull mold for, it's like a, an ice cube. That's a skull. So you can, um, you know, kind of take a product. You're like, Oh, this is kind of cool, but I, and I like this niche, but I don't know if I want this product per se. You can put that ASIN in here, find other products that are related to that um, product. And it's, it's a really cool way to find other products. Um, we've got bat deco decals here. We've got a web shelf. Um, so you can see that this is definitely in within the niche of what, um, you know, we are, we're already selling and, you know, it's things that you could bundle or, or you know, uh, you know, sell additional products. So really uh, that's one of my other favorite tabs on here is the product targeting tab. Um, and, uh, again, you just put the ASIN in here, any ASIN, and it's going to show you similar products. And cool. another tab that I also love is the niche tab. And you can put anything on the niche tab and you can kind of find something. So for example, I could put like goth, um, a lot of times I put in here boho decor <laughs> cause, uh, it's kind of a cool niche too. So you can find like a bunch of different like products that have the boho, uh, decor look. And you can find all kinds of cool stuff. So we've got like the pompous grass. We've got different uh, macrame things. So really cool way to find other products in a specific niche or within things that you like. So maybe you like a certain type of crafting or decor. You can put that in here and you can find all kinds of product ideas um, within that niche tool. So um, you can see these are all kinds of interesting uh, different decor things, bundles of things that you could really easily um, implement in there. So those are, those are, I would say my main favorite tabs in the block box tool, main favorite ways to find um, products. So basically, you know, finding them first in black box and then looking at the numbers in our X-ray Chrome extension, seeing the sales numbers, looking at the reviews, making sure you have quite a few that are under 100. Um, and then, you know, the price point, making sure that's above $25 and, and things like that. So, um, that's pretty much, you know, how you do um, research with Blackbox. Awesome. Well, that sounds great. What other kind of tools uh, complement um, the Blackbox then? So we mentioned Blackbox there. We mentioned the Chrome extension. After that, what would you kind of move into? Like keyword research? Uh, or You could move um, into keyword research and that that would be a whole nother um, lesson. But this, sure, uh, yeah, really, you would yeah. look into Cerebro and Magnet. <laughs> and with all of our tools, no matter what, we always have these learn buttons up here. So whatever tool you're on, click on the learn button and it's going to show you how to use that tool. So even if you okay. forgot, you know, what I said about black box here, you can learn how to do that there. You can also go to, you know, Cerebro. Um, our Cerebro tool, and you can find that there is a learn video here. You can find all kinds of great videos and learn how to do keyword research there. So cool. we've made it really easy for everyone to, you know, figure out how to utilize our tools with those videos. Okay, cool. Because yeah, there are a lot of tools available on Helium 10. If you open up the tools tab again, you can see there are so many, <laughs> to, you know, that you yes. offer on Helium 10, which is kind of crazy. So yes. um, yeah, so the learn buttons are really good then to have that uh, to say refresh your knowledge or learn from from new um because i say it's a, it's, there's a lot of stuff on helium 10 it's actually a little bit overwhelming for someone new you know looking there but now we know if you're looking for product research you're looking to find some ideas find some opportunities that we can use the black box and yep. they've got all those filters in there which is kind of crazy there's so many filters you can do um 
Awesome. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Any final words of wisdom for anyone who's, you know, just signing up to Helium 10 and looking for any kind of products? Yeah. I mean, I would, I would definitely say what you were just mentioning is don't get overwhelmed. Just focus on one thing at a time. Product research is your first thing. So learn the, the tools with those videos, um, play around with the different filters. And the, the more you do that, the more you're going to learn. And then once you're there, then you can go on to keyword research and, you know, you can take it step by step instead of, you know, trying to make yourself an expert in everything all at once. That will be too overwhelming. So that's what I would say is just start off, do a bunch of brainstorming. I don't take anything too seriously. If I think something looks interesting, I'll kind of save it on a short list and then validate it later. So usually I'll do like a brainstorming session and just say, okay, I'll, I'll kind of quickly validate based on the parameters I just said, and then go back and kind of do a deep dive. So I, I wouldn't get too stuck on any one product. The more kind of the bigger the list you get together, the better opportunities you're going to see. Okay. So um, just kind of keep those brainstorms going and, uh, and I think you'll, you'll find some good products. Cool. Awesome. Well, thanks very much uh, for coming on and You're teaching welcome. us how to use Blackbox. There's an offer right now for Helium 10. I think it's 35% off for two months on Platinum, which is kind of a crazy price. So if you guys want to yes. sign up, test out Helium 10, link in the description. Um, yeah, thanks, Carrie, for coming on. I really appreciate it. And hopefully we'll have you on for more videos. Uh, there's yeah. so many tools on there to learn. It's kind of yeah. crazy. So um, <laughs> it'll be amazing to get you on again. And hopefully everyone Would loves love these to. videos as well. So thanks very much for coming on anyway. I really appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. Have a good rest of the day. <laughs>